Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on subtracting integers. Now in our key concept box, it says to subtract an integer, add its additive inverse. So 2 minus 7 becomes 2 plus negative 7. A minus B is A plus negative B. And there's a simple rule that we can follow when it comes to subtracting integers. And that is keep, change, opposite. We're going to keep the first integer, change the subtraction to addition, and the opposite is the same thing as additive inverse. And so when we look at a question like 9 minus 14, I'm going to rewrite that, 9 minus 14, what I'd like us to do is to keep, change, opposite. In other words, we keep the 9, we change the subtraction to addition, and then the opposite of 14 is negative 14. And now it looks like and is an adding integers question. Well, we're adding two integers. One's positive, one's negative, so we need to look at the absolute values. We have 9 and we have 14, which absolute value is larger, the 14, so our answer is going to be negative. And if we just subtract then 14 minus 9, we get 5, and our answer is going to be negative 5. So when we're subtracting integers, we can keep change opposite, change it into an addition of integers problem, and just add like we did in the previous lesson. What about negative 10 minus 8? Well, again, if we keep change opposite, we'll have negative 10. The subtraction changes to addition. And the opposite of 8 is negative 8. And so we have an adding integers question now with the same signs, negative plus negative. So we can just add the two numbers up, 10 plus 8 is 18, and keep the answer negative since both signs are negative. So negative 18. Let's continue practicing with a few more examples. So we have 15 minus negative 4. And so if we were to keep change opposite again, we'll keep the 15, change our subtraction into addition, and the opposite of negative 4 is a positive 4. Well, this is just 15 plus 4. Both are positive. So add them together, and we get 19, positive 19. What about negative 11 minus negative 7? Well, again, if we keep change opposite, we'll end up with negative 11 plus the opposite of negative 7 is a positive 7. And here, once again, we're adding integers with different signs, and we look at the absolute values. Absolute value here is 11 and 7, and so our answer is going to be negative. And once we just do 11 minus 7, even if we were just to do that mentally, we don't necessarily have to write 11 minus 7 down, we'll get 4. But it's going to be a negative 4, and that is our solution. All right, example 3 deals with finding distance on a number line. And so let's just start by drawing a number line. Let's label a few points on here, such as negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And let's pretend that we have a point at negative 3 and a point at 2. One of the things we're going to be asked to do here is to find the distance between negative 3 and 2. Two.
One method we can use to do this is to find the difference between the two numbers, but the absolute value of the difference between the two numbers. In other words, in the absolute value, we can take 2 minus a negative 3. And since all distances are positive, that's why we use the absolute value. Well, if we were to keep change opposite, keep change opposite, we end up with the absolute value of 5, which is 5. And if we were to count our distance actually just counting on the number line, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the distance between these two is 5 units. Now what if we were to find the distance between 7 and negative 5? Well, let's take the absolute value and go 7 minus negative 5. And that would be the absolute value of 7 keep change opposite. And it's the absolute value of 12, which is just 12 units for our solution. So the distance between 7 and negative 5 is 12. Now what if you had both being negative, just as a little side example here. What if we were looking for the distance between negative 5 and negative 12? We can follow the same idea. We would take the absolute value of negative 12 minus negative 5, or you could switch that order too, but we'll just go with this, and we will keep change opposite. Negative 12 plus 5, we're going to take 12 minus 5 to get 7, but we'll keep it negative since the 12 has the higher absolute value. And the absolute value of negative 7 is 7. And so the distance between negative 5 and negative 12 is 7. So whether you have two positive numbers, a positive and a negative number, or two negative numbers, you can use this method to find distance on a number line. Now lastly, for our word problem, the top of an iceberg is 13 feet above sea level. The bottom of the iceberg is 117 feet below sea level. What is the distance from the top to the bottom of the iceberg? Well, sometimes a pretty picture can help us. And not that I'm a good artist, but I just have a little bit of water here. And I have this iceberg sticking up to right around here. It goes underneath the water to right about here. This bottom distance is 117 feet below sea level, so we're going to write for 117 feet below negative 117. Above sea level is a positive number, so this is 13. So very similar to our distance on the number line, we're looking to find the distance between 13 and negative 117. And to do that, let's do the absolute value again. We'll take the absolute value of 13 minus negative 117. Well, if we keep, change the sign, and opposite, we'll find the absolute value of 130, which is just 130, and our units here are feet. And that is it for this lesson on subtracting integers. Just remember, keep change opposite. Good luck.